just when you thought you could turn your back and walk away. The dark cloud of human indignity follows you. You have no choice but to turn and look it in the eye. It's the sex offender hit list. solicit sex from a teenager at a Lee County Park. Thank you for counting on NBC2. I'm Kelly Burns. And I'm Kyla Gaylor. The suspected predator is now behind bars. Lee County deputies arrested Jorge Lucero for preying on the teen at Riverside Park in Bonita Springs. NBC2's Hope Salmon is live there tonight talking to some concerned parents. And kids expect to come to the park for a good time, but that wasn't the case for one 14-year-old boy who said a man tried to touch him and then asked to have sex with him. The park should be a safe space. It wasn't Thursday when deputies say this man, Jorge Lacero, had an inappropriate encounter with a 14-year-old boy. People at the park today don't seem completely surprised. I always make sure that she's with her brother or she carries like mace with her just yeah. for protection. Deputies say Lucero approached the boy on a park bench at Riverside Park in Bonita Springs, touched his leg, had an inappropriate conversation, then put his number in the boy's phone and sent him a text. If you need to know like a safe place to go, yeah. Like, it's good to know your surroundings. That's exactly what the boy did. After the encounter, he ran from the park to the LCSO substation nearby to report the incident. I always make sure that she's with her brother or she carries, like, mace with her just yeah. for protection. And deputies say they use that phone number to track the suspect down. He lives just two miles away from this park. I'm reporting live in Bonita Springs. Hope Salmon, NBC2. Well, the owner of a restaurant in Boise is charged with lewd conduct with a minor. Jose Fabricio Sanchez Vasquez is the owner of Garnacha Que Apacha. Sanchez was arrested Wednesday. Court documents say that he committed these crimes between August and December of 2023. The prosecution says that the victim is 16 years old and is currently 28 weeks pregnant. They say that she went to the Nampa Family Justice Center where she revealed that Vasquez got her pregnant. The victim worked for Vasquez at the restaurant. The prosecutor says that Vasquez admitted to having sexual relations with the victim in various places, including at work. He is also admitted to receiving nude photos of the victim. Vasquez also said that he had doubts that the victim was over 19 years old, but continued the relationship anyways. The prosecutor says that the victim had asked Vasquez for help to support the child. He initially denied it, but ended up putting her back on the restaurant's payroll, even though she no longer worked there. His bail is set at $200,000. His preliminary hearing is the 18th of April. The statewide news network tonight covers Steuben County, where a man has been arrested for child pornography. 21-year-old Caleb Perry of Angola is behind bars tonight. Officers seize multiple electronic devices from his home, they say. Perry is facing multiple felony counts. And police have arrested a man for allegedly possessing child pornography. They made that arrest at a home on the 300 block of West Dayton Street downtown yesterday. The 70-year-old man was taken to the Dane County Jail. A man who was awaiting trial in Scott County on eight charges was uh, allegedly inappropriately touching three juvenile females. Was arrested again Friday for allegedly possessing more than 4,000 images of child sexual abuse material. Ken Cade Lee Godfrey, this 20 year old here, had been on pretrial release after he was arrested in November on four counts of lascivious acts with a child, three counts of indecent contact with a child, as well as one count of indecent exposure. Lascivious acts with a child is a Class D felony under Iowa law that carries a prison sentence of five years, while indecent contact with a child is an aggravated misdemeanor that only carries a prison sentence of two years, and of course the indecent exposure is a serious misdemeanor that's up to a year in jail. Uh, this investigation into the uh, appropriate touching began back in September of well, last year, according to the arrest affidavits. Godfrey was expected to make a first appearance on the child sexual abuse material charges Saturday in Scott County District Court. 
and uh, a judge will be able to schedule a preliminary hearing in that case. Godfrey's being held as of this morning in the Scott County Jail on a cash-only bond of $90,000. Want to know what QC weather is up to? Then check out TV6 Weather live stream for detailed, up-to-date QC weather info. Watch it live on KWQC.com or KWQC News app. This morning, we're focused on helping parents protect their children online. So Meta says that it's taking steps to prevent content shown to children and teenagers after legal filings from earlier this year found roughly 100,000 kids are exposed to sexual harassment on Facebook and Instagram every day. Melanie's joining us now. Mel, there are steps that parents can take to filter the content that their children see across the internet. That's a big number. It's a, it is, and as a parent, it does scare yes. you a little bit. And honestly, there's nothing really that you can do but make sure that you are watching what your kids are doing. There are parental control features and filters, though, and there are also important conversations that you must first have with your kids. At school, at home, even when they are supposed to be sleeping, kids are on social media anywhere and everywhere. And it seems what they can access online has no limits. Current research is saying that about one in four teens have received a sext. Meta Platforms estimates 100,000 kids younger than 18 receive photos of adult genitalia or other sexually abusive content every day. And Meta's platforms, like Facebook and Instagram, have allegedly connected underage users to potential predators. So what can you do to keep your kids safe? Stay really attentive to how much time your child is spending on social media, have very clear limits, and pay attention to unusual mood fluctuations. You can also turn on safe search filters, like Google Safe Search, on computers, phones, and tablets to block explicit images, videos, and websites. Use parental controls to block specific apps and websites on phones and other devices. Also, your internet service provider might be able to apply these filters and parental controls to TV channels as well. But these filters are not 100%. It is so critical to talk to kids about these kinds of situations before they may find themselves in it. Got to be an engaged parent, right? So parents can also set a kid-friendly search engine on their child's web browser. That includes on Google Scholar and sites like Kids Search. They are designed to weed out inappropriate content. A Coeur d'Alene doctor is facing charges of sexual exploitation of a child and video voyeurism for allegedly hiding a camera in a staff bathroom at his office. An employee of 68-year-old Dr. Spencer Greendike contacted police to tell them about storage devices with concerning videos on them. And when police searched Greendike's house, they found more evidence. Greendike turned himself into the Kootenai Public Safety Building this afternoon. Tonight, a child molestation suspect accused of cutting off his ankle bracelet and escaping from home confinement has been captured. Providence police say 36-year-old Corey Dennis was found in New Hampshire after four days on the run. He was indicted by a grand jury last month on three counts of first-degree child molestation related to alleged incidents in 2022 and 2023. It's not clear when he will be able to be returned to Rhode Island. A Bonita Springs man has been arrested after deputies say he sexually harassed and touched a child at a park. According to the Lee County Sheriff's Office, 59-year-old Jorge Armando Lucero approached the child at the Riverside Park in Bonita Springs and began an inappropriate conversation with him. Lucero touched him and gave the victim his phone number, touched his leg, and then solicited sex from the minor. After the encounter, Deputies say the victim ran to a police station to report what happened. Well, anyone who preys on children will be held accountable for their disgusting crimes here in Lee County. I'm glad the victim trusted law enforcement to protect him by immediately reporting the incident, stated Sheriff Carmine Marciano in a Facebook post about this arrest. Lucero has been charged with lewd and lascivious behavior, like the chomo that he is. Five Quad City men have been arrested in connection to human trafficking. It happened during a two-day human trafficking enforcement, enforcement operation around Moline on April 3rd and 4th. The five arrested have been charged with indecent solicitation of a child and traveling to meet a child. Both are Class 3 felony charges. 
An Evansville man faces several charges after an undercover child porn investigation. 38-year-old Ryan Verdon was arrested this morning. An EPD detective says they were online investigating people downloading and sharing a child porn when they came across Verdon. He's being held on a $5,000 bond. We now know the names of the three sheriff's deputies involved in that shooting that left a suspected child rapist dead in Deer Park. Investigators say Deputy Josiah Luce, Detective Samuel Turner, and Detective Travis West shot and killed 43-year-old Donald Hegel during a standoff last Friday. The sheriff's office claims Hegel came outside to talk with law enforcement but was uncooperative, saying police would have to shoot him. SWAT eventually entered the home, and that's when the three sheriff's deputies shot Hegel. The three deputies are on administrative leave at this time. Deputies arrested a 25-year-old Sturgis man for allegedly breaking into a home and sexually assaulting two girls. Investigators say that on March 20th, two girls under the age of 13 were sexually assaulted during a home invasion. It happened at the Sweet Lake Manufactured Housing and Camping Resort community in Fawn River Township. The sheriff's office said that video surveillance of the vehicle that was suspected to be involved was found and deputies identified the suspect. He was tracked to Fort Wayne, Indiana, where he was arrested. The suspect is facing charges of home invasion and criminal sexual conduct. He's being held on an immigration detainer. The uh, state police have charged the choir director at a Woodbridge Senior High School in connection with the sexual abuse of a minor in Leesburg seven years ago. This goes to show you, you can't hide forever. This is Joel A. Shapiro, 32 year old. He was arrested Thursday and charged with one felony count of taking indecent liberties with a child by a custodian. State police initiated an investigation last July into this creep uh, due to an allegation made against him in connection with a 2017 incident in the town of Leesburg. At the time, Shapiro lived in Leesburg and was a music teacher with the Clark County Schools. Shapiro was taken into custody without incident and released on bond from the uh, Ladoon County Adult Detention Center. Shapiro had worked in Woodbridge High School in Lake Ridge since 2017, according to the school choir's website, where he taught several school choirs and chorales from 2014 to 2017. Shapiro taught at Clark County High School and Johnson Williams Middle School in Berrysville. After a lengthy investigation, Michigan State Police and the Ingham County Sheriff's Office have arrested a man they say was in possession of child pornography. The Ingham County Sheriff's Office says Corey Swan of Jackson County first came to their attention in late January after receiving a complaint from two local children. When the Sheriff's Office discovered Swan lived outside of Ingham County, they brought in the state police to help investigate. Authorities searched his home on a warrant in late March, and Swan was arrested on multiple child pornography charges. He now faces up to 20 years in prison. We are at home. The Grovetown Police Department says a foster parent has been accused of sending explicit photographs of him with a minor on the Internet. Police say 39 year old Neil Bussler was arrested yesterday in the investigation. Police learned that he expressed a desire to meet up with minors at motels as well as accompany them to various anime and Comic Con festivals in Atlanta. Police had one juvenile removed from his home and they're now in the care of defects. Bussler has been charged with one count of obscene Internet contact with a child. The Grovetown Police Department is now asking anyone whose children may have had contact with Bustler to reach out to them. Now to our crime tracker this evening. The man who took a plea deal convicted of sexually assaulting a young girl over the course of roughly seven years will be spending at least the next 49 years himself in prison. Ernesto Canales was sentenced today after taking that deal last month. Back in 2021, a 14-year-old girl told investigators Canales had been molesting her since she was just seven and that he had threatened to kill her loved ones if she ever told anyone what was happening. He's also accused of assaulting three other girls between the ages of five and 16 over the course of a decade. A pastor who was on the run after being charged with rape in the Keys has been caught. This is a picture of Monty Chitty in the back of a cop car. Chitty failed to show up for his arraignment in Marathon on Monday. He's accused of assaulting a 15 year old girl. The fugitive task force of the U.S. Marshals arrested Chitty in Texas. In mid January, a detective with the Ingham County Sheriff's Office opened an investigation after receiving a complaint that two local children had been inappropriately contacted over social media by an adult male. 
After a lengthy investigation, the detective positively identified the male and located evidence suggesting he was in possession of child sexually abusive materials. The office says he was actively seeking additional images and videos by soliciting underage children using several social media platforms and chat rooms. It was determined that the male living outside of Ingham County and the Michigan State Police were requested to assist with that investigation. And then on March 27th, the Michigan State Police Internet Crimes Against Children's Task Force, as well as the Ingham County Sheriff's Office, executed a search warrant at the suspect's residence in Jackson County. And that's where they found 23-year-old Corey Stanley Swan of Jackson County. He was then arrested, and additional child sexually abusive materials were recovered. Swan was lodged at the Jackson County Jail and was arraigned on multiple counts of aggravated possession of child sexually abusive material, child sexually abusive activity, and use of a computer to commit a crime. If convicted, Swan could spend up to 25 years in prison. And let's hope so. See ya, Chomo. Your statewide news network tonight covers Steuben County, where a man has been arrested for child pornography. 21-year-old Caleb Perry of Angola is behind bars tonight. Officers seize multiple electronic devices from his home. They say Perry is facing multiple felony counts. Tonight, former Francis House School District bus driver Robert Stilwell is facing more than two dozen child sex abuse charges. Now St. Charles County Police are alerting parents that he may have had contact with hundreds of students as a bus driver. Five on your side's Diamond Palmer is live from district headquarters in O'Fallon. Diamond. And Francis House School District says 66-year-old Robert Stilwell hasn't worked for the district since May 2023. And we've learned from this investigation this evening that Stilwell drove bus routes for elementary, middle, and high schools. Court documents show St. Charles County Police began investigating Robert Stilwell in December last year when he was accused of sexually assaulting his 7-year-old while babysitting her, and it was reported to police. After he was arrested, police served a search warrant in January where they found hundreds of thousands of videos and photos of child sex abuse material on his computer. The documents show Stillwell lived on Springwood Drive in St. Peter's. His former neighbors disturbed by the news. As a father, I'm very shocked. I just, I can't believe it. And for, and for him living uh, so close to me, I'm a little bit freaked out a little bit. Calva Sean Ford lives doors from where Stillwell used to live. Ford has a four year old son of his own, and he says he can't imagine what parents facing this reality feel. I wouldn't know what to do with myself if somebody was to do that type of stuff to my to my little to my little guy. I'd be I'd be really, really mad. Police say a piece of their investigation is working with the district to notify parents if their student rode a route that Stillwell drove. He drove buses to Bryan Middle, Barnwell Middle, Hollenbeck Middle, Cass Leo Elementary. Central Elementary, Harvest Ridge Elementary, and Francis Hell North High School, all during the school years of 2021 through 2022 and 2022 through 2023. A district spokesperson said in a statement, Stillwell has not been employed by the district since May 15, 2023, and there's no indication that the criminal charges against the former employee are related to his previous employment with the district. Ford says his young son will grow up in the district and wants better for the current student. Like, I know they do background checks and stuff, but you never know. Now, Stillwell is facing 23 charges, including for statutory sodomy, child molestation, sexual misconduct, and possessing child pornography. Police are asking anyone in the district who still has questions if their child was riding on a Stillwell bus right route to contact police. Reporting live here in St. Charles County, Diamond Palmer, 5 on your side. Man was arrested in Beaver after an investigation that found he sent lewd and sexually explicit messages to a minor. 54-year-old Timothy Loomis was taken into custody by Beaver Police and Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. He will be charged with four counts of solicitation of a minor and booked into the Beaver County Jail. Developing this afternoon out of an Anchorage courtroom for the first time since police arrested a man after they say he exposed himself to a child at the Alaska Club. The man faced a judge and the child's mother. Joe Kadat in the newsroom after attending that arraignment this afternoon. Give us the update. Today's sometimes emotional court appearance comes nearly two months 
after police say the suspect, Natchez Dunlap, who we saw cover his face with papers today, allegedly exposed himself to the four-year-old. As their mom worked out at the Alaska Club back on February 10th, Dunlap appearing for the first time just hours ago after his arrest yesterday on indecent exposure charges, he told the judge he's a wounded veteran with no family in Alaska who's covered his face because he fears for his life in jail. As we previously reported, police say he exposed and touched himself in front of the four-year-old girl at the Alaska Club's south location in a pool area. The judge rejected Dunlap's attorney's request cash bail reduced from $5,000 to $3,000 and said a court-appointed supervisor would have to be appointed if Dunlap's released from jail. He's also been ordered not to be allowed anywhere where children are, including gyms and schools. This four-year-old girl's life has changed. My daughter was trusting, open, outgoing. <clears throat> And now she has to testify in front of a grand jury, a trial, and she questions everything. I'm here by myself. My mom passed away. I don't have any family in Alaska. Okay. So GPS and homebound, I, I don't have a flight risk. Because how can I catch a flight out of Alaska if, I, if I'm on GPS? Or I promise I will make all my court dates. As we've previously reported, the Alaska Club has revoked Dunlap's membership. The mom maintains they should have worked with police sooner than the club staff says they did. Dunlap has a pre-indictment hearing scheduled for Thursday, April 11th. The judge says the maximum sentence for the crimes he's accused of is 20 years in prison. Rebecca? Over to Indiana, where a Franklin man was convicted this week of child molesting as he awaits to receive his sentence later this month. The Johnson County Prosecutor's Office announced in a news release Friday that a jury convicted Tony E. Powers on April 3rd after finding him guilty of child molesting. Powers reportedly molested a girl between the ages of 8 and 10 years old at a residence in Franklin between 2017 and 2019. The charge is a level 4 felony and carries with it a potential 12-year prison sentence. It should be life. I'm very pleased that this child molester will be serving years in prison, perhaps more than a decade for his crime against a helpless little girl, and it's simply despicable what he did, said Johnson County Prosecutor Lance Hamner. Powers is set to be sentenced in Johnson Circuit Court on April 25th. And be sure we'll be here to cover that too. See ya, chomo. A Sioux Falls soccer coach was in court Thursday charged with possessing child pornography. A judge set James Coima's bond at a half million dollars cash only. He's facing eight child porn charges for allegedly using Snapchat to access images. Police say it's important parents monitor their children's social media activity. I know that a lot of the time parents may think that it's the kid's phone or it's their account. Um, but you're the parent. You need to do the job and, and that sometimes involves making sure what your kids are doing and making sure they're staying safe. Koima was a parent coach with the Dakota Alliance Soccer Club, but officials with the organization say it appears none of the alleged crimes are connected with any club activities. A Bradford County man is facing child sex charges after a retrial of a case that took place over nine years ago. According to the Bradford County Criminal Court, 34-year-old Jonathan Rivera is the one charged due to a legal technicality. The charges against Rivera were overturned in September of last year. The documents say that during the retrial, four victims testified that Rivera committed various sexually motivated crimes against them when they were children. Rivera is currently in the Bradford County Correctional Facility without bail. A full list of the charges against Rivera can be found over on our website, myjointeers.com. Monongalia County Sheriff's deputies have arrested a man they say sexually abused a child. On March 10th, deputies say that they learned that 22-year-old Jake Johns caught in a bed and under the covers with a young child at a home in Morgantown and that Johns had asked the child to touch him inappropriately. Johns has been charged with sexual abuse, now being held in the North Central Regional Jail. The breaking news that's coming in right now, the CBI has bust a child trafficking ring in the national capital. Three children have been rescued, while seven accused have been arrested. Searches were conducted at seven locations across Delhi, Haryana, and uh, the three children 
have been rescued in this child trafficking ring and seven people who have been accused in this have been arrested by the police. A man was arrested and faces multiple child sexual assault charges. Sergio Ortiz, a 36-year-old, was arrested on Friday by the Sparks Police Department. He faces multiple charges including five counts of sexual assault against a child under 14, five counts of lewdness with a child under 14, and two counts of child sexual abuse with a child under 14. No further details are readily available for this chomo, but you can be sure that when they are, you can be sure to find them here first on the sex offender hit list. See ya chomo. 60 year old man answered to an attempted kidnapping charge today after he allegedly tried to lure two teenage girls into his car last week in Swansea. 12 News reporter Sheena Loshuda was there for his court appearance and you spoke to the suspect's family, Sheena. The suspect's family is defending him. Meanwhile, the state says they have surveillance video that paints a much different story. 60-year-old Michael Nutt Brown is accused of trying to lure two teenage girls into his car in Swansea last week. He was kept out of the public's view in the courtroom today, but we caught up with his family after. I n never think he would do something like that, you know. I think that's all absurd and all lies. Prosecutors say on Thursday, Swansea police got a call from the two alleged victims, two 13-year-old girls who were walking home from school on Milford Road. First, they noticed a car. Male who was driving the vehicle looked back and looked at them weird is what they said. They felt uncomfortable. The car continued driving. The suspect is allegedly captured on video in the parking lot of a store, moving things around, making room in his car, which investigators believe was in preparation for the girls to get in. He's also allegedly spotted looking down the walking path multiple times. The male who was inside the vehicle rolled down his window and asked one of the girls if they needed a ride. They were unable to hear him the first time they asked him to repeat himself and he again asked, do you need a ride? The two girls are seen on that video surveillance then running from the vehicle. The defense says the state has it wrong. Nut Brown was asking if the girls are okay, thinking they were almost hit by another car. Bail was set at $1,000 cash today. Nut Brown is due back in court at the end of the month. Well, Tennessee House Republicans are pushing to allow the death penalty for for child rapists. This despite the Supreme Court nearly a half a century ago ruling that was unconstitutional. State Capitol reporter Chris O'Brien explores the move as the bill weaves its way through the legislature. There have been nearly 38 convicted child rapists per year in Tennessee on average the last 10 years. And if it were up to House Majority Leader William Lambert, all of them would potentially be up for the death penalty. It's a good bill. I don't say that just because it's my name at the top of it. This year, he sponsored a bill to allow the death penalty in cases of child rape. Recently, it passed the key Senate Judiciary Committee by a single vote. The real question you sh everybody should be asking is, is the death penalty truly a deterrent? The Supreme Court already ruled against the type of law Lambert is gunning for. But the House Majority Leader is hoping they reconsider following a similar law that lawmakers passed in Florida. There's a U.S. Supreme Court, Supreme Court decision that found that those laws were unconstitutional in large part because there weren't very many states that still had them on the books. Back in 1977, the court decided it was considered cruel and unusual punishment, which is a violation of the Eighth Amendment. Democrats also pushed that the death penalty has been a source of racial inequality since its inception. We know still today that if you're poor, or a person of color, then you're not going to get equal justice. We know there's no equity in the way that the law is applied. Some Republicans have privately expressed frustration that the bill is a bit of a poison pill. Either they're forced to vote what some see as soft on child rapists, or they're forced to vote for a bill the Supreme Court sees as unconstitutional. In Nashville, Chris O'Brien. We're learning new details in the arrest of a former Stigler high school teacher accused of having and distributing child porn. You see him right there. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Sarah Whaley. Shay has the night off. We first told you about this story last night. Donald Holt was arrested at his home yesterday. Tonight, Fox 23's crime and safety reporter John Sebus spoke with the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation about the case. John joins us live in studio. John, agents say things like this really leave an impact on the community. Yeah, as you can imagine, they tell me it's hard when they're arresting a teacher, especially when it's the only high school in a community. What I can tell you tonight is that investigators don't believe there are images of those students. 
This is Donald Ray Holt, a former Stigler High School teacher, arrested Thursday, accused of having child porn. Is there any um, chance that any kids might be victims of being photographed by him? No, not not at this this time. Again, that that'll this will be an ongoing investigation for us. But but at this time, there's nothing that, that we can uh, uh, identify regarding that. I'm speaking with Hunter McKee, spokesperson for the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. We can say that there were um, that there were uh, images that were that were located and found on on devices that this suspect had. McKee tells me a cyber tip in November led to a months long investigation and then the arrest. Based on the evidence obtained during that investigation, Holt was uh, located and he was arrested on multiple charges. This included uh, possession of child pornography distribution of child pornography. The school district put out a statement Thursday saying, in part, administrators were contacted by law enforcement about an investigation involving a school employee. According to law enforcement officials, the investigation stems from an allegation that is not related to the employee's role with the district and does not involve Stigler students. The school district themselves um, was was tremendous in, in working with us and you know, again, as soon as we were able to identify this person as a teacher, um, we presented that to them. Um, we were um, talking with each other constantly and and the, the school district was able to do what they could. So I have checked the court records for Haskell County and have not seen any charges filed yet in district court. I was told they were filed. But at this point this afternoon, I've not seen that. But I do know for a fact that he is still in Haskell County Jail tonight. A LaGrange minister is facing criminal charges of sexual battery and child molestation. 44 year old Russell Tusing the second was arrested on Friday by Troop County deputies on warrants from LaGrange police. Investigators tell WRBL a report was filed in late February kickstarting an investigation into the minister at Sovereign Grace Church. The allegations of abuse date back to 2022 involving a teen victim. WRBL has reached out to the Troop County District Attorney's Office and Sovereign Grace Church for statements. We'll let you know when we have a response. Now over to Wyoming. In the Toronto County man entered a plea on Wednesday to child sexual abuse charges, some of which date back to 2008. James Maxwell Bright, a 40 year old, entered an Alfred guilty plea. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it essentially means that he maintains his innocence but doesn't wish to challenge the state's evidence at a trial. And of course, he's going to take advantage of the plea deal. Bright was originally charged with 23 counts, including lesser included charges for singularly alleged incidents. But he pleaded to five, one for each victim. Yeah, there's a lot of victims out there, probably more that they didn't find. The victim reported instances of abuse while being babysat by Bright during the previous school year, saying Bright referred to her as his little girlfriend. The victim would have been around the age of 10 at that time, according to the charging documents and the information available. Bright formally pleaded to three counts of sexual contact with a minor, one count of immodest or indecent liberties with a minor, and one count related to intrusion on a girl who was 14 at the time. Bond was set at $200,000 cash only at his initial appearance. And of course, he remains incarcerated on a $100,000 cash surety bond as well. See ya, Chomo. Our top story at 6 o'clock. The OSBI says an online tip started an investigation that led to the arrest of a Stigler High School teacher accused of having child pornography. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Lori Fulbright. And I'm Craig Day. A parent tells News on 6's Cal Day she's shocked by the arrest but is glad the teacher's in jail. OSBI agents arrested 61-year-old Donald Holt after a five-month investigation. Holt is accused of having and distributing child pornography and violating the Oklahoma Computer Crimes Act. Holt was a high school history teacher at Stigler High School. Kimberly Owens lives near the school. It's definitely upsetting, very overwhelming. Um, Definitely a lot of emotions. She's a single mom of four Stigler students and says it's especially upsetting because Holt has been a teacher there for years. When they go to school, I expect to be able to 
trust the teachers to keep them safe. The OSBI says the investigation started last November after a tip from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children regarding child sexual abuse material. Agents served a search warrant at Holt's home. Based on the evidence obtained during that investigation, um, Holt was located. Um, and he was arrested. In a letter sent to parents, the superintendent says the investigation does not involve any students here in the district. It also adds that the teacher in question submitted his resignation and is no longer with the district. The district says it is fully cooperating with all law enforcement agencies and there is nothing more important to our district than the safety and well-being of our students. School district did a tremendous job working with us and they 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 understood that when this case was presented, um, that, that they worked swiftly and did what they could in order to help us. In Stigler, Cal Day, Oklahoma's own News on 6. A Florida fugitive wanted in Monroe County is now under arrest. He was found all the way in Texas. Our news partners of the Miami Herald say he was a pastor in the Florida Keys. Monte Lavelle Chitty is accused of sexually battering a teen congregant. Deputies say he was working with the homeless through a Texas church group. A church member was the one who contacted law enforcement there. We have an update on the Decatur substitute teacher accused of sexually assaulting a sixth grader. The victim's family has hired attorneys. Chicago-based law firm Cunningham Lopez LLP is representing them. The firm says the teacher's actions will have significant physical, emotional, and psychological impacts on the 11-year-old boy. 32-year-old Ellie Bartfield is accused of having a sexual encounter with him. Attorneys say they will be pursuing legal action against not only Bartfield, but also Decatur Public Schools. They say the district failed to ensure the safety and well-being of its students. Right now it's really early, but there are a lot of possibilities. Um, if in fact it is confirmed that there was some type of inappropriate contact between my client and uh, the, the woman who was charged, then... Um, there's common law and statutory relief that may be available to us both on the state level and the federal level. And a Hickman County family is scared, upset and frustrated after they say school authorities continuously violate a court order that puts their children in danger. News 2's Andy Cordan has been investigating and has more on a story you are seeing first here on 2. Andy. Hey there, Mark. You know, this story is complex. It's about sex crimes involving kids, but it's also simple. It's about parents who want to keep their kids safe, and they tell me that the school system is failing them. He sexually abused our daughter, as well as our granddaughter, was charged with three counts of aggravated sexual battery. After a teenage boy sexually assaults two young children, a Hickman County judge issues this no-contact order. It specifically prohibits the boy from coming within 100 feet of the victimized girls. The problem? All the children attend the same Hickman County school. And the parents tell me the judge's court order is violated multiple times every single week. They're not doing what they said that they were going to do every day. My older daughter comes home and tells me that he's been within arm's reach of her. I told her that every time he's within any distance of you to take a picture. To prove their point, the family sends News 2 pictures showing the 100-foot rule being violated within the school. I'm very upset because if he'll do that to my children, he'll do it to other children. On April 3rd, John Mullins, the director of Hickman County Schools, sends this correspondence to the family. It says in part, as they have been this entire school year, Mr. Brewer and Ms. Emerson are committed to making sure that the female is not in close proximity to the offender. They also are committed to preventing any interactions between the female and the offender. I, I'm beside myself. I, I, I'm a veteran of the United States military, and I'm also a retired law enforcement officer. And every day that this continues, that nobody cares what has happened to my child is, is very frustrating to the point where I have to fight the urge to take it into my own hands. And it's ridiculous that you can't get people to just do their job. And knowing that it's not just happening to us and knowing the fact that, that they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing every day is the opportunity for this to repeat, that it could happen to somebody else's kid, that it could happen to anybody else's kid. Now, the school director, he did email me this afternoon, but he could not comment. He says without breaching the privacy of the juvenile court records, DCS also will not publicly comment. But as a rule, 
DCS is required to notify the school board that a no contact order is in place and then it's up to the school system to physically find a placement strategy that complies with that order. It's complex. Let's send it back to you. All right, we got another one of these scumbags for you. This is a recon man who was a teacher at Epicum County High. He's in custody facing several charges, including child molestation. This is Leslie Eugene Pierce, 66 year old. He was arrested Tuesday afternoon in Savannah by the Recon Police Department and booked into the Effingham County Jail. He's being charged with aggravated sodomy, sexual battery, aggravated child molestation, and enticing a child for indecent purposes. Pierce has been a construction teacher at Effingham County High School for five years, but he had not been on the campus since August 12th due to these charges, according to Effingham Principal Yancey Ford. Ford uh, said that it did not appear that any of the incidents occurred on school property based on conversations uh, that he had had with the recon investigators. It doesn't mean that it wasn't with the students there at the school. Just trying to get out of it. It's a tough topic lawmakers are trying to address, but they still need the governor to sign off. A Senate bill, if approved, would require all sex offenders convicted of hurting a child to notify their communities and have their information uh, published on the sex offender website. Now, we feel if we are working to try to make sure that everybody's neighborhoods are safe out there and advocates tell us that this bill would close a dangerous loophole here in our state. And ABC 15's Patrick Hayes has the story now at 10. The Arizona Department of Public Safety says there are more than 10,000 registered sex offenders living here in Arizona, but under the current law, not all of them are required to be listed online. And that was created to give us a tool to give us that accurate information. Kaylee Kozak has been pushing for tougher sex offender registration laws for years. I was sexually abused for two years by my PE teacher and my club soccer coach, someone who was in a position of trust, someone who worked overtime to groom the communities in which he was involved. Her abuser was later convicted, but is only a level one sex offender. So under Arizona law, in his particular case, he doesn't show up on the public registry. This is so common. Look at how many teachers we're seeing that are arrested every single day for committing crimes, sexual crimes against their students. Under the current law, typically only level two and three sex offenders show up on the public registry. We sent emails to all 15 county sheriff's offices here in Arizona to find out how many level one offenders are in our state. A dozen of them responded reporting a combined 2300 level ones. We also reached out to Phoenix PD and they tell me that their team is monitoring nearly 1300. When people think of level one, they think of the lowest risk and people often will say, well, public urination would be a low risk level. Um, and unfortunately in Arizona, that's not how it works. It's not based off of the crime committed. It's based off of this 19 question general risk assessment. Senate Bill 1236 looks to put level one sex offenders who commit specified offenses on the public list. That includes child molestation, sexual conduct of a minor, and taking a child for prostitution. The bill is sponsored by Republican Senator Janae Champ and received bipartisan support. This is just making sure that everyone that should be on a list, that is already on a list, that the public can find it. I think they should be on the list. Olivia Branch says she's lived in Phoenix for six years and has used the sex offender website. I don't necessarily have kids, but you know, when my nieces or nephews come over, I wanna know where I can let them go. Kozak says if this bill doesn't get approved, most level one sex offenders may have an easier time reoffending. And so it's time that we start being proactive and less reactive with these laws regarding sex offenders. The bill has passed both the House and the Senate and is on the way to the governor's desk. Patrick Hayes, ABC 15, Arizona. Parents, listen up. We are sharing a very disturbing story tonight out of Webster County. A Tennessee man was arrested by the Webster County Sheriff's Office on enticement of a child for sexual purposes. WTVA Sammy Roebuck sat down with the arresting deputy about this case and what it means for our youth. 
She's joining us live in the studio with what he said. Sammy. A 25-year-old guy thought he was meeting a 14-year-old girl. Turns out it was a Webster County deputy. This is Seth Zeiler. He's from Nashville, Tennessee. Zeiler traveled all the way to Webster County near Eupora, Mississippi. He took the trip thinking he was meeting up with a teenager to engage in sexual activity. That is over a five hour drive across state lines. There are so many of them out there and it's so easy for them to get access to these children. Webster County Deputy Aaron Banks is a part of the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force for the Attorney General's Office in Mississippi. He was posing as a 14 year old girl on the app called Whisper. It is an app where over 100,000 monthly users communicate with each other anonymously. It is supposed to be for people 17 and up, but that is not always the case. They're going to go where where the kids are, and obviously, you know, he believed that they... That she was on this application. These are screenshots of messages between Zyler and Chief Deputy Banks. Banks makes it clear his undercover persona is underage, and Zyler replies as if that's not an issue to him. Uh, I mentioned it several times over the over the months that we were talking that I that I was young, and he he said he preferred that. Banks told me there were much more explicit messages sent by Zyler, but these these are the ones okay for public consumption. He says, as a brand new dad, he's concerned. You got to watch your kids online because the stuff's so easy for them to get to, and uh, you know it, we've given up a lot of security in, in the in the name of. Uh, quality of life and, you know, fun online. There's this whole other world online that we don't even see. After watching that story, you might be asking, how can I keep my kids safe online? These are some tips and tricks. Monitor their social media use, foster open communication, educate about cyberbullying and its consequences, teach critical thinking skills for online interactions, and safeguard personal information. Of course, there are even more ways to keep yourself safe online, but be sure to utilize those. The FBI even asked to take over this case. Zyler posted his $180 $80,000 bond and is back in Tennessee. He was indicted in federal court just days ago. Live in the studio, Sammy Roebuck, WTVA 9 News. Six, St. Louis Metro Police trying to track down a man charged with sex trafficking a child. Court documents show John Washburn is charged but not yet in custody. Investigators say a cyber tip led officers to find more than 200 photos and videos of child porn. Searching his phone revealed he allegedly exchanged money for the explicit videos. Tonight, there is a warrant out for Washburn's arrest. We begin this hour with two breaking news stories. First, from St. Ignatius High School. Within the past hour, the school district released a statement saying an investigation found sexual abuse allegations against late father Frank Canfield are credible. Father Canfield was a chaplain at the school. The incident happened during the 2011-2012 school year. He is also accused in an incident that happened at St. John's Jesuit High School in Toledo. That, too, was found to be credible. We reached out to the diocese for a statement. We will bring that to you as soon as we get it. Meanwhile, now we'll head down to Texas. A Brian man was arrested Tuesday and charged with possession of child sexual abuse material. According to reports from the Brazos County Sheriff's Office, this chomo, 21-year-old Joseph Rafino, had sexually explicit pictures and videos in his Snapchat account of a girl he knew was just 15 years old. After a lengthy investigation, authorities found that he had ongoing conversations with that minor. Rapino is being charged with two counts of possessing child sexually abusive material and is being held on bonds totaling $500,000. David Washington County Sheriff's deputies say from the start, these suspects thought they were connecting with children and they were okay with that. But when they tried to meet them in person, they found law enforcement instead. Now, officers run stings like this all the time, but the problem is potential predators keep showing up. It's a sad fact that this happens. Anel Sarek is a detective with the Washington County Sheriff's Office. This week, they conducted a child predator sting to nab adults trying to meet children for sex. Once this happens to a child, it's very traumatic and they carry on into adulthood. Sarek says investigators posing as underage boys and girls set up decoy profiles on several dating apps and websites and waited. 
He says people contacted those profiles and offered to meet someone they thought was a child for sex. Deputies arrested four men for luring a minor and online sexual corruption of a child. 30-year-old Matthew Goldman of Tigert, 27-year-old Jesus Rodriguez Garcia of Forest Grove, 25-year-old Gerardo Serrano Garcia of Hillsboro, and 54-year-old Ruben Olvera Gaona of Forest Grove. Deputies are sharing these mugshots because they think there could be more victims. They say while chatting with a decoy, Rodriguez Garcia said he'd had sexual contact with other minors. Above all, Sarek says it's critical parents warn their kids about what's happening and monitor who they connect with online. You have to be involved in your child's life, what they do on their phones, their iPads, any sort of uh, websites and media that they use, which they use. It could make the difference when the wrong adult is watching. The Washington County Sheriff's Office is available to help teach kids about Internet safety. They provide online classes for parents and community organizations. Just reach out and ask them. David. Thanks. A Tawanda man is also facing charges after police. Pennsylvania State Police find child porn in his possession. According to the Pennsylvania State Police, 46-year-old John P. Mansfield is the one charged. He is char his charges come after police got a search warrant to search his home and devices. A Toma man has been convicted of 23 child sex crimes. According to the Monroe County DA's office, after a four day trial, a jury convicted 53 year old Mark Bruner in connection with the victimization of two children between 2008 and 2019. Bruner was accused of sexual assault, enticement, and causing a child to view sexual activity. He was previously convicted of child sexual assault in 1988. Bruner faces a mandatory prison sentence of 25 years. He will remain in custody until sentencing on June 20th. A resident of the Panola community in Simpson County is facing charges of child sexual abuse materials after being arrested at the University of Southern Mississippi's parking garage following an attempt of self-harm. An individual wanted on felony charges has been spotted on the campus by the police and uh, shortly after that call, police located an armed man who was not affiliated with the university in the parking lot garage where he threatened to kill himself. After negotiating with the man, officers from the university, as well as the Hattiesburg Police Department, the Forest County Sheriff's Office, the Lamar County Sheriff's Office, as well as the Mississippi Bureau of Narcotics were able to resolve the situation without incident. The suspect, who was later identified pol by police, as 25-year-old uh, Demarcus Tyrese Burkett of the Panola community was taken into custody and transported to the Simpson County Jail and put in the Bam Bam Room. And he was charged with two counts of possession of child sexual abuse material as well as one count of enticement of a child. Mr. Fritz. Hey, Kelly. Nice to see you again. Thanks for coming over. Nice to see you too. Always happy to help out with Aiden. One in five children is sexually abused before they turn 18. Aiden, come say hi to Kelly. Do you know the signs? What are you doing? Learn more about the risks of child sexual abuse at sapria.org.